I'd like to share a couple of things with you. One is, and I'll be very brief, and it's very simple. I, uh, I ran for uh, politics, I ran for the tribal chair back in 2009. And of course, um, I, was, I was elected um, to, to be of service by our community. Well, when I made the ballot, I uh, thought, I better get some campaign materials together. So I, I wrote this big, long campaign letter. It was like 14 pages long. And, <laughs> and, uh, but I had a, a summary in here called Our Land. And I wrote this, this, this essay about how I think we need to focus on something as a base to grow. And for our reservation community, I thought that was our land, our waters. And I wrote in there how we should be protectors and we should really acknowledge what we got and we need to really protect and defend this stuff. When I wrote that in 2009, you know what I was thinking about? I was thinking about Asian carp. I was thinking about purple blue strife. I was thinking about hybrid cattails and global warming. N not even in my wildest thought or paradigm did I ever think of, because of how naive, naive I was, of open pit mining, sulfuric acid, and all that other stuff. So I made the ballot in uh, September, and then a strange thing happened. Um, I'm just going to say, say this unapologetically and just say it for what it is. I had a spirit come and visit me, and he gave me a packet of dreams. Dreams that were so vivid, so real that I'd wake up and and I realize that I just lived that. They're so vivid and they're so real that I can recall them in explicit detail right now. And I don't know if, if this is the way it is for everyone, but I've lost my, my grandparents. And uh, when my grandparents died, they came back and visited me in dreams. I remember one time I woke up crying because I was with my grandpa, you know, and when I woke up, I realized that, oh, my God, he's still gone, and I cried, and I was telling my grandmother about that. And she said, you know what, those are, those are spirit visits, and she told me what to do and how to approach those, and, and to cherish them, right? And I don't know if that's ever happened to anybody else, um, but that's, that's kind of the way it is. But one of the things that, that I was shown, and again, now, keep in mind, this is in 2009, and I'm worried about purple blue strife. I was taken and I've shown uh, a picture. It was like I was looking through uh, a car window in a heavy rain, but I've shown a picture of a forest bleeding. And then he took, took me and he set me down on some padded reeds, the way reeds on a riverbank look after the snow melt. You know, everything's crunched right to the ground, nice and flat and clean. He set me down on some padded reeds right on the river, and he wanted me to look, and I looked, and out of a stream into the river, I watched this mustardy, yellow sludge type stuff come floating out, and I watched it float right underneath me, and right by me. And then we were off and flying again. He set me down in a lawn in front of an old dilapidated log home, like a big lodge. And I went in there, and there was this banquet, banquet room, beautiful, linens, glasses, everything set for a feast. And there was a big rock fireplace, and there was rock of snowshoes up there, and one rock of snowshoe right in front of the fire. And I looked at that banquet room, and everything was covered in a film of dust. It was deserted and kind of run down. I remember standing here looking at those rotted snowshoes, looking at the way the, the strings and the bindings had snapped and rotted. And he wanted me to go out the side door. So I stepped out the side door, and there was fresh, really beautiful snow on the ground. It was only about an inch deep. And I remember walking through that snow, and I had to, I can't tell you how he, how he told me to do this stuff, right? I just knew that I had to do it. I pushed my way through some pines, and I was pushing for quite a while, and I stepped out into this pipeline. And right in front of me was, was this big metal pipe. And it came out of the ground, 
it doubled back on itself like an upside down horseshoe and went back down into the ground. It was like a, a pipe that transports oil or water or something like that, not a, not a plug and not like a pipe you use and smoke in a ceremony. And I stood there looking at that thing like, what is that? What, what is going on? And I was confused. And I looked to my right, and down that pipeline, as far as I could see into the distance, I could see that pipe coming out of the ground about every five, six hundred yards. And it just faded in the horizon, and it reminded me of like a snake. And then we were off, and we were flying again. And he took me, and he set me down outside this, on the steps of this big, ugly building. And that building had razor wire at a 45 at the top of a fence that come right up to it. And he told me to go in that building and talk to those people, talk to those men who wanted me to do that. And I remember as I was sitting there, and before I had to go to that door, I remember noticing there was nothing behind it, nothing. And I sat there pounding on that door, and when I turned around, that, that spirit that was with me was gone. And I sat there lost for a long time in that dream. It felt like a long time. And I finally sat down on the top of the concrete steps. And as soon as I sat down, I woke up. And I sat there in the middle of the night thinking about that for a long time, going, what was that? What was that? And, and I've since come to understand that that dream and a couple of others that I was given were everything that I needed to understand about the stuff that was coming. Everything I need to know about our story, about our home, our waters, about the Pinocchi Mountains, about Bill Williams and GTAC, about Governor Walker and his dreams of what the WEDC would do with all that mining money. Everything I needed to understand was given to me in a very, very clear little packet and how did I come to realize that? It wasn't through faith. It wasn't through just believing. It was through the scientific analysis that staff and others around the state of Wisconsin showed me. And all I had to do was go, I know exactly what you're saying because I've I seen that. I've seen that. 